வணக்கம் டிடி நேர்களே நாங்கள் பிரேங்க் ஸ்கார்பிடி மார்க்க மேயரோடு ஒரு சந்திப்பு இங்கே நடைபெற இருக்கின்றது எனது ஸ்கிரீனில் இப்போது மேயர் மார்க்கம் பிரேங்க் ஸ்கார்பிடி அவர்கள் இணைந்திருக்கிறார்கள் அவர்களிடம் ஒரு சிறு உரையாடல் மார்க்கம் சிறியை பற்றியதும் இப்போது தற்போது கோவிட் பெண்டமிக் காலகட்டத்துக்கு பின்பு நடந்து கொண்டிருக்கின்ற சில நடவடிக்கைகள் பற்றிய ஒரு சிறப்பு ஒரு சந்திப்பு இப்போது இடம்பெற இருக்கின்றது வெல்கம் ஃபிரேங்க் ஸ்கர்பிடி டு டிடி ஹெச்டி டெலிவிஷன் இட்ஸ் அ ரியல் பிளஷர் டு மீட் யூ ஹவ் ஆர் யூ டூயிங் டுடே வெரி குட் சிந்து அண்ட் வணக்கம் டு எவ்ரி ஒன் அண்ட் கிரேட் டு பீ வித் யூ and before you get into the really tough questions I I just okay. want to say thanks to TT for the great work that they do in in connecting um the Tamil community certainly with all the issues and and certainly with all the different events uh I I always take great pride in the fact that the city of Markham is uh, the most diverse community in all of Canada and uh, it's thanks to organization like yours that really connect us to the entire community so thank you for the great work that you do and thank you thank you for joining us today and i want to give a little bit of background on you to our tt viewers so i'm um, sure they know you but i don't think they know the detail and the extent of all the great work and how long you've been in the political career and all the um all the organizations and all the boards that you have been part of it looks like you were pretty much born and brought up in Markham with the way it sounds like so i'm going to go over the list with the tt viewers so they also you know know you better and understand you better um Markham mayor uh, Frank Scarpetti was appointed as a mayor from 1992 to 1994 um and he has served in various roles in the municipal politics as uh, your regional councilor budget chief and the deputy mayor he He was elected in 2006 as a mayor to replace oh. Don Cousins who had retired and he was re-elected in 2010 he was also re-elected in 2014 with almost 71% of the votes and he has served in various town committees um over the over the years he's been a chair of York Regions Planning and Economic Development Committee member of the Finance and Administrative Committee member of the Community Services Committee uh co-chair for the coyote at the Markham city of Markham chair of York Regional Planning and Economic Development Committee member of the Transit Committee Solid Waste Committee York Regions Youth Advisory Committee Markham Theater Board Rouge uh, Park Alliance Canada Day Committee Power Stream he's been the vice chairman of the Power Stream and he's been the chair of York Regional Services Board the list just goes on and on and on looks like you've been part of literally everything uh how has your experience been serving for the Markham over the years well for me uh it's been a, a real honor and uh you know now uh looking back uh, it, it's great to uh say that uh, I'm the longest serving member of council now and the uh, the longest serving mayor but uh uh for the city of Markham but to really say that in in 2021 uh the city marked its 50th anniversary our our roots as communities goes back uh, a lot longer than that over uh, 225 years but in terms of when uh, the province of Ontario set up York region and when they set up York region they set up the nine municipalities that was uh we marked the 50th anniversary last year and it's fair to say uh to be able to serve for me as long as i have it's been a real uh, honor and to see the way that the the whole community has progressed it, it's with great pride with great pride uh that i say that the city of markham is the most diverse community in all of canada and i i i think that diversity has really strengthened our community uh on so many levels the social fabric the way that we've come together particularly during the pandemic to support each other and and uh, from an economic point of view i mean the the number the countless number of businesses that have been started by newcomers who come into our community and uh from really the ground up sometimes starting these businesses in their basement or the garage and they grow and they become big employers in the area right. the progress that's been made is is truly outstanding and and for me it's been uh, 
as I said, a, a real honor to, to watch the community grow and to see the hopes and dreams of, of people who've come from different parts of the world have their fulfillment here in, in the city of Markham. It's, it's really been uh, quite astounding to watch it all happen. Right. And also, I guess, also being part of all these committees and boards, you understand the depth of, you know, uh, all the aspects of it in a lot more detail, I guess, where, versus other people, right? So well, I, I think it's sort yeah. of, uh, you know, the the sort of, again, the honor to serve and, and delve into these issues. Right. I also right. will say, though, uh, that the city of Markham, mm -hmm. two levels, the city of Markham and York Region, we're both uh, very lucky and fortunate to have, uh, you know, qualified professional staff mm -hmm. who I think have been leaders in many respect when it comes to municipalities. I, right. I consider the city of Markham a premier municipality in all of Canada for all the, the financial management. We've had the, the lowest average tax increase for the past 17 years. We've been... Uh, deemed uh, the uh, top 100, in the top 100 uh, employers the city of Markham has uh, by the, the Forbes list. We received uh, very good ratings from the C.D. Howe Institute on our budgeting and transparency for budgeting. So, I mean, the list goes on, the sustainability that we have uh, as well, uh, you know, our green print plan to be net zero by 2050, we truly, stand out when it comes to municipalities across the country and so uh for the size of municipality that we are I, I really pay tribute to the councils and to the staff over those 50 years that have made us the incredible community that we are today okay that's amazing that's amazing to hear and uh again we appreciate all the work and all your you know effort and building this community up to this level so, uh, we definitely recognize all of it that's why we wanted to meet you today and um uh just sort of getting to uh, more specific questions now that we've uh, dealt with this pandemic in the past two years uh that seems to be the main you know um course of event throughout the whole um regions and municipalities so how is markham doing now that you know uh the pen the the, the mass mandates have lifted up and uh, just the pandemic has a little bit, uh, uh, it's sort of coming to a normal, uh, we hope we hope to see a normal normality soon. So how how is uh, uh, the city of Markham doing as a whole and how do you find the citizens are doing with the lifting of the mass mandates? Well, I, I just from personal observation, and uh, you know, it really depends sort of uh, the the different environments. But uh, just uh, driving around and and uh, looking at at some of the uh, different areas, uh, for example, I I still see a fair bit of compliance, uh, if you will, self compliance right. uh, that people are, are wearing masks. Yeah, still wearing masks in in places where they there's a, a high concentration. Not everywhere. Right. Um, I think some of it, uh, you know, people make their judgment about where they, they want to mm -hmm. do that. And but there's still a lot of people doing it. I, I was pleased to see that the uh, the medical officer of health at the province of Ontario is extending the mass mandate to the transit systems. Okay. And uh, I think that's important yeah. because people are close and they are spending most times a fair bit of time on transit getting to uh, work and, and back home okay. and uh, I, I just say our own leadership here I mean I, you know when when uh, I came forward uh, at regional council uh, to have the mandatory mass here in York region I can tell you that that caused a domino effect right across uh, the greater Toronto area uh, it was sort of being thought about but when we did it here uh, I was getting emails from from municipalities across Canada saying, "Oh, why can't we have a mass mandate here? Why doesn't why doesn't our council have the, the mass mandate in our community?" Right. So it really started a whole domino effect right across uh, the whole country. Mm -hmm. And really, uh, obviously, we're we were <laughs> very very uh, pleased to see the the vaccines come forward and provide that level of protection. But the mass 
always throughout the whole pandemic has provided uh, a level of protection that's that's you know pretty cost effective too. And even and, if schools and again, are highly encouraging within the classrooms as well, right? It's a pretty simple thing to do, and it just provides you that that layer of uh, of protection. And and uh, I'll just say that I continue to do it, uh, wear them uh, when we're in indoors uh, with other people. And even outdoors where there's close uh, proximity um, and, you know, where sometimes uh, we stop to take a picture, uh, right. there's no talking, we, right. you know, we kind of quickly take the picture, but um, I, I continue to do it and certainly encourage others to do it. And you know what, at the end of the day, it's like anything, Sintu. I, I, I got asked at the very beginning of the pandemic, before, before anybody knew really about the coronavirus, you know, there were members of our community who had maybe heard about what was going on in other parts of the world. They started wearing masks. Mm -hmm. And I was asked, well, what did I think about that? And I said, it's, it, it holds true today. Mm -hmm. I would never criticize any individual mm -hmm. who wants to take extra measures to protect themselves and to protect their right. family. Right. And that relates to all kinds of things in life. You know, some people uh, obviously, would never take the risk of crossing the road uh, in the middle of an, you know, middle between yeah. signalized uh, intersections. Uh, others uh, take other steps uh, during uh, their activities outdoors yeah. uh, related to the sunshine. Right. At the end of the day, uh, people, when they take those extra measures, uh, I would never criticize anybody for, for taking extra measures to keep themselves safe and certainly to keep the community safe as well. Okay, awesome. Um, that was some uh, really key important pointers that our viewers should really keep in mind. I wanted to translate a little bit for our Tamil speaking viewers uh, with about some of your responses. Um, uh, Frank Solirandar, mask Podavade, the Katahem Nichi Mile and Editirandalam, Amade. மீண்டும் <laughs> பாடசாலைகளில் பிள்ளைகள் போட்டிருந்தால் நல்லது அத்தோடு கன மிகவும் நெருக்கமான பலர் கூடியிருக்கும் இடங்களிலும் தொடர்ந்து இந்த இதை அணிவது நமக்கு நல்லது இந்த தொற்று நோயிலிருந்து நம்மளை காப்பாற்றலாம் என்பதை மிகவும் தெளிவாக இங்கு கூறியிருந்தார் தேங்க்யூ ஃப்ரேங்க் நெக்ஸ்ட் மார்க்கம் இஸ் பிகமிங் ஒன் ஆஃப் த மோஸ்ட் எக்ஸ்பென்சிவ் பிளேசஸ் டு லிவ் இன் இந்த ப்ராவின்ஸ் அண்ட் I know recently I've heard uh, there's been an announcement uh, that there are going to be a number of new houses, new development that's also going to be coming in Markham. Um, but in reality, I'm not, I know there are some housing, um, um, uh, so there are some interest rate adjustments and there are some housing uh, rules and regulations that the government is uh, putting in place. But, uh, just realistically, how are our children, our future generation, maybe able to afford to, you know, purchase or rent a house um, in in Markham in the future? What are the actions that are, you know, um, potentially in plans to help the residents have affordable homes in in the city of Markham? Well, this is a real serious issue, and mm -hmm. uh, I made a commitment at the beginning of this term, right. Uh, right at the night of the inaugural when we were sworn in. Right. Uh, it's it's uh, about three and a half years ago now. It's gone by pretty fast, uh, given yeah. everything that's happened. Right. That we would hold a housing summit. We we you know this issue has been an issue that's been around mm -hmm. for the last number of years. Right. And recognizing that um, it is a complex issue. Mm -hmm. And there isn't one, one solution that's going to solve the whole problem. But the fact is, we needed to think about what we needed to do here locally 
and hopefully entice the other levels of government to also take action by holding the housing summit. So we held that, uh, got delayed because of the, the pandemic, right. uh, but we've been working with nonprofit groups to talk about how we can assist them okay. to get more nonprofit housing in uh, the city of Markham and trying to uh, look at ways to, to for our own system, but also help them when they are dealing with other levels of government. And I was very pleased that uh, Minister Hamad Hassan, the Minister of, uh, of Housing federally, uh, was able to join us and kick off the, uh, the Housing Summit, right. along with uh, Premier Doug Ford and along with uh, Steve Clark, the Minister of Municipal Affairs. Yes. And uh, I would just say that I think we captured the attention of those levels of government by holding that summit. We had a, a, a wonderful program, talked about the opportunities that we can undertake here and also what we need to do with the other levels of government. So for us, uh, we are gonna be coming forward with inclusionary zoning, okay. looking at ways to uh, incorporate a certain percentage of affordable housing. So when a project comes forward, mm -hmm. it, it's gonna be potentially market housing because that is something that, that obviously has been selling and doing quite well over the last, mm -hmm. last number of years. But we would also uh, look at ways to include affordable housing within those projects, uh, either uh, home ownership that's affordable or rental. And uh, I can tell you that as the mayor, I've been a strong advocate of increasing rental housing. Uh, we just had a project uh, about a couple of weeks ago. They're doing a seniors project, which is a life lease. So that to begin with that, that product, the life lease product is, a, is more affordable. And then included in that project, which we insisted on, I insisted on it, and as did other members of council, that they also have rental as part of the project. So there's 150 rental units that were incorporated in that, just that one project alone, because we have to increase the, the mix of housing that's available in, in our community. So we're doing what, what we can locally with the tools that we have. Uh, we also took the step, the added step, and this is something that we've been looking at and we'll, we'll come up with a more, permanent uh, solution. But in the meantime, we've also discounted the amount of uh, uh, parkland that a builder would have to give the city of Markham uh, for rental units or for affordable ownership, recognizing that there's a lot of demands that are required of builders right. and that if they were supplying those things, then they uh, would get a bit of a break. Now, uh, others have said they have to have more of a break, and we're trying to balance that between, you know, obviously trying to make housing more affordable, but at the end of the day, we also believe in complete communities, making sure that there's parks and making sure that there's facilities. And by the way, we're adding a lot of great facilities in the south end of Markham, which, will, you know, has a, a large um, Tamil community. Uh, so, we have to ensure that when the community is finally built and built out, that that people also have those recreational facilities. The other part too, uh, that I've said for many months now, the last few years, is really the the, the planning process in the in the province of Ontario is is broken. It, it just takes way too long for for housing that you plan for to when actually a home is available for someone to move in. Yeah. And I can only speak to Markham where we many the years ago- pandemic just made it worse, right? <laughs> well, and we're trying to, we, we, we tried to get ahead of the, the, the curve. Yeah. We started the planning process early. We started doing the studies earlier. It, does, it really hasn't mattered. Here we are over 10 years of this new area in the North end of Markham okay. that was planned for future growth to this day, we still do not have one family that has moved into a home in that area. And that's an indication of how long the process Thanks. takes. Yeah. And so, uh, and I think the province, uh, provincial government recognizes uh, that the process is uh, an issue. It's mm -hmm. not the only issue. Uh, so we've asked, I know I've asked for, for different parts of the process to, to be removed. 
uh, because at the end of the day, I think the city of Markham has the sophistication, uh, the region of York has the sophistication to deal with some of the policies on their own, right. uh, to give us some of the, and, and they've done a bit of this, but one of the things that we've heard a lot about is municipal zoning orders and the provincial government to be able to use municipal zone, zoning orders as a way to expedite specific projects. They've used it in Markham uh, and I'm glad they did for long-term care facilities because had, had uh, they, the organizations that wanna build long-term care facilities have to go through the process, it would still be probably another anywhere from three to five years before they get the approval mm -hmm. to actually build. So we've asked for that same tool and more most recently, the province did indicate that they are willing to give municipalities uh, uh, infrastructure and housing accelerator. Mm -hmm. However, they didn't go far enough, Sindhu, and that we have to now on a per case basis ask for mm -hmm. the opportunity to use that tool. And then the province will decide whether we can use that tool. Well, the reason we asked for that tool was to in fact get projects that would provide rental, affordable housing, long-term care, seniors housing, Okay. through the process faster and let us decide as local municipalities where we could do that. And most recently, um, the federal government uh, also uh, included the $4 billion in their budget to build 100,000 housing units over the next number of years. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that the city of Markham will be able to get some of that funding uh, to in fact provide some of that housing within our own community. And one last piece that, that I've requested right. is um, that young families, first time home buyers, mm -hmm. I mean, part of the problem is getting the supply out there, but this is gonna become a real concern if the interest heights continue to grow. I know. Uh, I know. It might, We're getting it might scared for, now. yes. Right, it might mm -hmm. force prices to go down, but it also may mean bigger payments, most likely will mean bigger payments for young people and young families. Right. Uh, I, I asked the federal government to consider the ability for first time home buyers only. Okay. So it's, which is typically young people that right. are trying to get into the market, right. that they be able to write off a portion of their mortgage or maybe the whole thing Okay. Uh, to, to be able to have a tax write off for that as a right. way to help these young people who are trying to buy their first home. Right, okay, that's amazing because if they're not able to afford these homes, there's no point having so many supplies, right? So- Yeah, and I, I think there's gonna have to be other mechanisms put in place. Again, yeah. you know, we, we've kind of allowed the free market and I believe in the free market, right. but now there's a very high percentage of, right. of individuals and companies mm -hmm. that own more than one property. Yes. And there's not necessarily not anything wrong with buyers. that, yes. but that's the thing. Then they're competing. Yeah. We have enough supply. Mm -hmm. Well, fine. Uh, that's, that's maybe a different scenario. But right. when obviously we don't have enough supply. And then the, the first time home buyer, the young professional, young families that are, are trying to buy their first home are competing with that. Uh, I think we have to level the playing field in some way. Okay. Okay. Awesome. That's great. Um, so uh, just for our TT viewers, just want to translate a few key points. We spoke a lot, but just wanted to highlight a few key points. So TT near Halagaha, Frank Solirandar, Tadpodu Markham Naharatil, Bird Halin Ville Mihavum, we are in the Poirak under the Elorakum Wanga Mudia and the Sandar Pamile, are they Tavit Padakin Angalena Salam and the Cut in the Bodu? Pala Buddhical Katame Padakaha, Titam, if for the Vandrak under the Pala 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 Niki on a Buddhical Katapoharka, a Todu, Vadahik Uria, Buddhical in Niki, we are the Poharka, other Matamalamel, Mukia, Pirichnia, Haverhalke, Iripa the Vandu, Buddhical Katavado, other Korea, Velekale, Save the Akal or Adapado Ile, and a Pirachini and Ral, other Korea Utterevi, other over or a word. Cut to the Kumudel or Kani Padetko, other Korea, um, uh, Utter Vahaled Padetke, um, Aras Arasida Mirande and the and the 
அந்த உத்தரவுகளை எடுப்பதில் தான் மிகவும் தாமதம் ஏற்படுகின்றது அதற்குரிய அதை அதை மிகவும் சீக்கிரமாக எடுப்பதற்குரிய வேலைகளில் அவர்கள் ஈடுபட்டிருப்பதாகவும் அதன் மூலம் பல வீடுகளை ஆஹ் கட்டி கொடுப்பதற்கும் விலை குறைந்த அளவுக்கு அதற்குரிய முதலாவதாக வீடு வாங்கு வாங்கு வாங்குவோருக்கு ஏற்ற மாதிரி குறைந்த விலையில் வீடுகளை அமைத்து தருவதாகவும் ஆஹ் இப்போது மேயர் கூறியிருந்தார் அடுத்ததாக பிகாஸ் யூ மென்ஷன் அபவுட் எக்ஸ்பேண்டிங் த கம்யூனிடி அண்ட் மோர் ஹவுசஸ் ஆர் கோயிங் டு பி பொட்டென்ஷியலி கம்மிங் இன் த கம்யூனிடி அண்ட் ஒன் நாட் தெர் இஸ் பீன் அ டிஸ்கஷன் ஆன் டேமோ மானிமெண்ட் இன் மார்க்கம் கவுன்சிலர் அஸ்மின்ஸ் மென்ஷன் திஸ் இன் த பாஸ்ட் அண்ட் அண்ட் ஐ நோ திஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் ஹேப்பன் சம் டைம்ஸ் லாஸ்ட் இயர் அண்ட் இட் வாஸ் சப்போஸ் டு பி டிஸ்கஸ்ட் லாஸ்ட் இயர் இன் அக்டோபர் அண்ட் வித் த பெண்டமிக் அண்ட் ஆல் இட் கட் காட் கேரிட் அவே ஜஸ்ட் வாண்ட் டு சோட் பிரிங் தட் பேக் நோ தட் யூ நோ வேர் இன் டிஸ்கஷன் அபவுட் த கம்யூனிடி அண்ட் பொட்டென்ஷியல் பிளான்ஸ் கமிங் அப் is there going to be a potential mon- monument tamil monument in markham for the tamil community and because you know it's very dear to our you know uh, heart and soul and and there are so many thousands of uh, tamils that reside in markham and would love to see that and you know um uh, gratitude towards it so is there any potential plans for that well i i, I want to address that and i will uh, but i also want to uh, say that um i think the city of markham um i'll say myself as mayor uh, certainly councilor usman but other members of council as well we've been very very supportive of the tamil community and and i i want to put this in perspective because we are the most diverse but fair to say we have you know higher percentage of certain cultural groups over the other right. for me that doesn't matter no. we have we have accepted we have welcomed people mm-hmm. of all backgrounds whether you know only 1% of the population up to whatever percentage it doesn't matter and i think in the city of markham we've demonstrated that support to the tamil community in various ways right first of all the recognition of thai pongal the recognition of tamil heritage month right. the naming of vanny street Uh, in the south end yes uh those were all there were more than symbolic gestures they yeah. were meaningful gestures to say that we truly welcome the tamil community here and we thank you for the amazing contribution that you've made and i will also say as a municipal government we've tried to recognize what our responsibility is to the local community as a municipal government and i know we get asked to get engaged in international affairs and my goodness there's lots of them right. uh you know particularly these days right. uh and and I want to always stay focused on the things that we can do right. but I'm very proud of the fact that the city of Markham was uh, I believe the first municipal government to actually ask many years ago for the federal government to investigate genocide uh, and to Yeah. uh you know put resources to that because that is the role of the federal government and at least at least to work through international bodies so right. we made that ask because we don't have the resources here at the city of markham uh that's that's clearly outside of our jurisdiction but we did on behalf of the tamil community ask the federal government to investigate uh genocide when it comes to the monument uh and i do you know say you you recognize councilor usman who spoke very passionately about this uh bringing the idea forward to to markham council so we referred that particular issue to our staff okay because uh we need to know as the most diverse community in all of canada mm-hmm. we've got various cultural groups who've come from different parts of the world many of them sadly have experienced trauma have experienced um loss of life right. in all kinds of different situations and and again because we have that diversity here we wanted to make sure that whatever policy we had about recognizing uh moments in history was going to be consistent and so our staff rightly so uh did get the advice 
of a professional uh, facilitator who said, if you have these requests coming, you really should develop an appropriate policy. And when you de develop that policy, you need to engage the community, the broader community, because we've seen in other communities where announcements get made about monuments, and then it gets a reaction from others in the community. And so uh, our staff uh, listened to that advice and said, we, if we're going to do this, we should be contemplating these requests in a consistent fashion and make sure that we have also engaged the community and have a, a very deliberate process as to how each idea will get evaluated. And I think that made sense. And unfortunately, because of the pandemic, okay. I mean, our, our staff, have, uh, they've done a terrific job, I think, all the way through keeping, keeping the city going, providing the services, and, and actually even enhancing services to our community, even with the pandemic. So this is something now that uh, we just adopted uh, uh, an updated diversity action plan. And we wanted to do that first. Mm -hmm. to guide any of the policies going forward from our diversity action plan. Mm -hmm. Now that that part is done, uh, our staff will engage a, a, a consultant to help us work through an appropriate policy. So I, I know that's probably, uh, you know, uh, not necessarily what the community wanted to hear, but I think in fairness to everyone, Mm -hmm. that uh, the city of Markham, because of its diversity, because of the different backgrounds, because of the different experiences where people have come from other parts of the world, uh, we need to make sure that we're not just dealing with these requests in a ha an ad hoc basis, because ultimately, whatever the policy is going to be, whatever the criteria is going to be, we need to apply that consistently across uh, the entire community. And by the way, this is what other other cities have had to do. They've had to put these policies in place. We, we probably should have had them in place a little earlier, but to be honest with you, it, we don't get these type of requests every week. And I think uh, we got this one and it really kind of made us think about getting this policy in place. So probably that's something that will probably be done in the next term of council, but we want to make sure that the community uh, gets engaged. But I know I know that uh, with they the haven't put a stop to it. There, it, there might be a potential based on it's about uh, developing policy. a policy okay. so that we can, yeah. uh, you know, we can deal with these requests. Now, hopefully, I know there's been a few ideas. Uh, I know it's just south of uh, south of us, but with the new Tamil Community Center, there was also I know some discussion about having some kind of monument there at the Tamil Community Center because. That would also make a lot of sense because it's the community center. It's a uh, it's um, on property that uh, would be within the control of the Tamil community, and obviously, you know, you don't have to wait for our policy there because the one it's it's just south of us. But also, it'd be a place where the Tamil community would gather, and uh, I'll leave it to those uh, that are involved with the Tamil community center to decide if there's an appropriate uh, appropriate recognition at the Tamil Community Center itself. Okay, okay, so that's awesome. TG Nair Hilakku, Mayor Dam Kattirundhen, Tamil, Tamil Rukhlakandi, or a cinema, the mother in Alipe, Adialan Kata with the Kahavo, a mother, a Makinadan, the two young lady, or Adialan Kata with the Kahavo, Tamil Rukhlakena, or Adiala Chinam, Markham Naharatil, Katapo Vadaha, Councillor Usman Kuri in there, Adane Torende, the Nadi Vadaki Haladaka Patada and Bade Kadir in the Bodhi, or Solir in there. Other Kaha wouldn't a Yaha and Adavarike, Edabum Edaka Ville, um, or Uru in a Makalaku on the Sedal, Macha in a Makalakum, Adak Etama, the Reseya Vendum, Apudi, Uru, 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 in a Makaleda Mirande, Pudi on Rivernum and Kirka Padambodu, other Korea Seriana policy, other Korea Seriana, Edith, other Korea Seriana, Mudibuhal, Utterbuhal, Edith, other Kapain, the Dan, other Nadim Rail Kondavera Mudim. Them. That Podu, other Kana, other Korea, um, 
பேச்சுவார்த்தைகள் அவர்களிடம் நடைபெற்றுக் கொண்டிருப்பதாகவும் எதிர்காலத்தில் நிச்சயமாக அப்படி அப்படி ஒன்றை முடிவெடுத்த பிறகு செய்ய முடியும் என்பதையும் இங்கு அறிவித்திருந்தார் அதனை தொடர்ந்து நெக்ஸ்ட் another question is since you know we all uh, we've addressed the chamuk community issue and now the um, considering what's happening in ukraine um, we hear in the recent news that markham is sending about 25000 for humanitarian relief for ukraine um what do you have to say in that and what are the other steps that markham city of markham is taking in in terms of support well, for ukraine again uh you know it, it's always difficult it's been amazing uh the response of individuals and companies and right. uh, i know there's been a tremendous effort to to assist in in any way that they can mm -hmm. i think it's been um quite inspiring the way the international community has come together to support right. ukraine and again as federal governments uh they they are the ones that have the resources to do this in in a big way Mm -hmm. fair to say that we thought about how we could do this and we we actually this is the beauty of diversity center we actually have an annual chinese new year's dinner okay. in the city of markham uh it's uh, one that that i hold and then the uh, the uh, uh co-chairs regional councilor joe lee uh councilor alan ho councilor amanda kalucci and councilor isa lee are the co-chairs of it they raise money every year through the chinese new year celebration right. and the last couple of years we haven't been able to do it but uh we took some of the funds from a previous dinner okay and we were able to contribute that 25000 oh, wow. 5000 is going to the markham rotary club foundation because okay. they are sending medical supplies okay. and then the rest will be through the the uh ukrainian red cross because they are providing a lot of humanitarian relief So again uh we did it these are not tax dollars they were fundraised through that event right i think at the end of the day um it, it's always a challenge to use taxpayers money because at the local level the yeah. only way we really get our funds are from property taxes yeah. so i would just say you know we really don't have the resources to start handing out international support but we thought this was a, an appropriate way of dollars that were raised uh, through fundraising efforts to donate and i think uh where i think the city of markham will be able to help as we've done in, in the past uh to various communities uh, more more recently the syrian refugees that came mm -hmm. uh is that we'll be able to help and assist because we can um motivate the community to make donations to support uh the refugees when they arrive here and also through some of our facilities and programs i remember we brought in um used books to the syrian refugees we allowed them to meet in our community centers we'll be doing all of that when the ukrainian refugees start arriving in, in bigger numbers i know there's been a few families who've already arrived but that's where i think we can really play an effective role in supporting the refugees that that come here but it has been uh you know to watch the images that we've watched uh have been uh very disturbing uh you know particularly the uh the the deaths of of uh, young children and uh so we're helping out it's 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 really a gesture in many respects because we know there's significant more dollars coming from uh countries foreign countries that right. are helping through various agencies and our federal government is doing that as well okay okay that's awesome all right so um sort of going back to the funding and how it's sort of being allocated to um small businesses in the initially when we started our conversation you said how proud you are with uh, you know individuals starting off in the garages and now you know um business owners of bigger companies and what not how are the programs or funds available for um or are being allocated for small businesses by the city of markham and is there any uh, especially after the pandemic is there any more particular plans in place for the small businesses to sort of nurture and grow well we we certainly continue to monitor the uh the small businesses i i'll say again and and i do give credit to both the federal government and provincial governments because they 
they have the, the, the resources available to them and they've mm -hmm. uh, certainly provided support yeah. to, to small, medium-sized businesses and, and different organizations. I, I really am proud of what we did literally within the first few weeks. I, mean, I don't think it was even a month old yet, right. but we made a very determined, I, I saw these announcements coming from other municipalities about 30 days or 60 days of tax relief. I, I said to our council, look, you know, uh, it's going to be a bumpy ride and we could, certainly didn't expect it to last this long. Yeah. Uh, I just thought at least the for the year. Small businesses got affected the most, right? So Absol Absolutely, because, right. you know, again, they don't necessarily have the resources or the flexibility to move around mm -hmm. with budgets. It's, uh, it's a small business and, and usually, um, you know, they, they're, it's all hands on deck to run their businesses in the, in the best of times. One of them at TD. <laughs> it's been tough. So what we did is that we said, look, um, for the, uh, for that first year, we actually allowed uh, for no penalties or interest to be charged on any outstanding property tax bills. Okay. We did that literally within the first few weeks of the pandemic. And I, I'd say it was the most comprehensive tax relief that any municipality offered up in that, in that uh, first few weeks of the pandemic. Others said 30 days, some said 60, maybe some said 90. We said, no, right to the end of the year. We don't want to be, we don't want people to have to worry about paying the, the interest or any penalties if they couldn't pay their property tax bill. And I'm very proud of, of that. We also uh, did not put in place that it was supposed to be uh, for uh, a, a tax, not a tax increase, rather a, a increase in the water rate in 2020. And we eliminated that increase for the uh, water rate. Again, saving money for homeowners okay. and also saving money for businesses. Mm -hmm. And we eliminated for 2020, the contribution for stormwater management. We're going back into, into older areas of Markham right. uh, because they were not built to the standards they built, they're built today, new subdivisions are built today. Mm -hmm. They are deficient in terms of uh, stormwater management. So really because of that, uh, we wanted to increase the flood protection in those communities. It's a, a multi uh, million dollar program into the hundreds of millions of dollar program over 20 years. Okay. And so we're systematically uh, dealing with the more critical areas and we'll just continue to build and improve the flood protection over the many years. We eliminated the stormwater management fee in that first year. And for, for homeowners, it was a little bit of a plus, but for businesses, it was a big savings because the homeowners get a flat rate, but where business owners get charged uh, uh, based on their, the value, the oh. market value assessment of their property. Oh, okay. So it had, it had savings for businesses. So again, we did that because we knew these are challenging times and we wanted to help our businesses. That's on the financial side. Then the city of Markham, very proud that we were the first municipality Mm -hmm. to participate in, uh, in the Main Street program. So this was a program actually developed by the BIAs, the Business Improvement Associations of the various Main Streets in areas in the city of Toronto. They were the lead on this and they'd had the program going, but thanks to the support of the federal government and, and also some technology companies, they wanted to expand this program nationally to mm -hmm. help small businesses. The city of Markham was the first city to jump on that program and participate in the program so that our local main streets and small businesses, they don't they didn't have to be on a main street, right. could, uh, could uh, take advantage of, of that support and that program. Okay. And then the other thing, it was good timing. We were developing, uh, had just started our tourism board, which we call Destination Markham. Okay. And, and so we had just set that up. They were just about to get rolling. And we said, hang on a minute. 
yes, of course, tourism you will get eventually get to, but we want you to develop a program to mm-hmm. help small businesses. So first. their first focus was to just get out there and promote main streets, the small businesses, the restaurants, mm-hmm. and Destination Markham, in my opinion, has done a fantastic job of promoting restaurants of all different cultures because we want people to recognize, number one, these, these businesses needed our support. Okay. And number two, this is the plus of Markham. You get to eat uh, anything from all over the world without having to leave the city of Markham. You get to enjoy the wonderful cuisine that's here. Uh, so we've had numerous programs and I know our economic development office will continue to work with the business community to assist them in, in any way that we can. And we were big advocates too on behalf of the business community. It was the city of Markham that made the request to the provincial government to, uh, first of all, we allowed for the expansion of patios to go into the parking lots and set up outdoor patios where in the past, uh, you know, when, when, when the capacity was full, you wouldn't have had room to do, but because there was room, we said, we're gonna let you expand into those areas. And then we passed a resolution and I wrote to the provincial government uh, to allow for the extension, the, the patio licenses to be, uh, to be exempt from ongoing um, applications because it only lasted for a certain number of days. Okay. And we said, we said restaurants really should get the license and then it should be in effect for the rest of the season. They shouldn't have to apply all the time. And, and the LCBO did grant that exemption and uh, again, the city really was a strong advocate on behalf of uh, small business and will continue to be. Okay, awesome. Um, so that's for the TT viewers. Siri Vattahangal, Makam Naharati, Irakam Siri Vattahangal, in the pandemic, Kalatik, Aparam, Padiana, Bahil, Naharam, Udavi, Save the Sahirakal and the Kedir and the Podu. Uh, Ningal or uh, or Vatahatko, Alade or Mala the Vitiko, uh, Urimiala Rahirikam Boru, and the Kanik Varikatinam Katavanya Rahirikam, and the Varikatinam Tama the Maha Katinal, uh, Mundia Kalahatil, um, Naharamanda, other Ku or uh, Inumor Katinamadik, um, Vedicum, and the Katinate Ilama Saida Kalinabum, uh, Tani Rubio Hate, uh, Ubio Katinate, Kutavadaha Irenda Dahavum, um, Adane. The pandemic Kalate uh, Oti, pandemic in the Podunangal Aru Mari Muri Vervadaha Irpada, Ungalaku, the Visa with the Kaha, and the Katanathim Ilama Sevada, Say the Dahavum, Matia Unavangalada, the Markham Naharatil Irkum, and it Unavahangalium. Unava Hangalakum, um, Averhalak, Mudin the Alavil in Enanjal Pandemic, uh, Kalahatil Podu, Mihavam, Padika Pata, Unava Hangal Dan, Upper Athahia, Unava Hangal, Anitim, um, Pirabella Padati, uh, Averhalak, Mudin the Udavikalai, Say the Say the Dahavum, Say the Kondir Padahavum, um, Frank Averhal, Atheribitan Dahal. Thank you, Frank. Um, we just have two more important questions. Um, what uh, we spoke about programs, we spoke about potential funds and all the supports that are being available for our small businesses and whatnot. What are the programs uh, that are potentially in place for people facing adversity, such as persons with disability or seniors? Um, I know um, we've had long-term care issues during um, COVID uh, period, and uh, there were a lot of seniors that were affected by that. And you did mention there are some um, policies or programs in place in getting the approval to build long-term care sooner and whatnot. Is there any other particular programs in place for these uh, persons with disability or seniors? Well, one of the things, uh, first of all, on the long-term care, uh, okay. the city of Markham doesn't build them, but one of the things we've done okay. has uh, been very supportive of a number of organizations who are working to build long-term care. Okay. And part of that has been uh, supporting uh, MZOs, Minister Zoning Order, in order to get their get through the planning process faster because like i said it, it just takes way too long right. in in ontario to do that and it's because we have to follow the legislative requirements so right. municipalities do what we do because we have to follow the law 
And so we supported those, uh, those organizations so that they can move faster to get long-term care mm -hmm. built uh, quicker. I'm also uh, supporting a couple of uh, local organizations, uh, St. Elizabeth Healthcare and Evergreen Hospice to get a hospice bill, mm -hmm. uh, residential hospice bill for people who um, end of life, who need end of life support. And yeah. that's uh, obviously for the individual, but for their families as well. Okay. And uh, hopefully in the next uh, few months, uh, we're going to get uh, some announcements made about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know those, those two organizations are, are working very, very hard. Mm -hmm. The other part that we've been doing is uh, examining how we design our communities, everything from homes. So how we can uh, create more age-friendly homes. Because I think for the most part, if people can, they want to stay in their own home. They're comfortable with their home. They're comfortable with their neighborhood. It's close yeah. to where their friends are. Yeah. And, and listen, as much as there's always a strong desire to do that, sometimes people just need such uh, extensive care that that's not always possible to do. Right. But for many, they can. And uh, with the support of programs, they can stay. But your home has to be designed with a lot more flexibility. So we're, we've been... Uh, working with the building community to try and, and get that. And overall, we're putting in age-friendly uh, policy. Okay. So everything from homes to mm -hmm. parks, to design of, of community okay. centers, to make sure that it, it, it's more welcoming and more user-friendly for people who are aging. Because over the next 20 years, Cynthia, we're going to see over 300% increase percentage-wise in the number of seniors. And we wanna make sure that both homes, facilities and the community mm -hmm. are designed so that they're comfortable uh, within their community. And the other part I will say, I think it's been evident. I know we have uh, a number of seniors organizations and there's been, I think, an amalgamation of a couple of Tamil seniors groups. They've come together. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, uh, at the Unique Community Center and at Armadale Community Center, the facilities are there and our staff work very closely with those seniors organizations to make sure that we're providing programs that are both helpful and mm -hmm. meaningful. And it's been, I'll tell you, the, the, obviously the, the pandemic's had a lot of different impacts, but it's it's been tough on seniors who um, in some ways they faced isolation if they were living on their own. Some, not all, uh, probably saw their families a little bit more. For those yeah. that uh, were working from home, they had a bit more uh, interaction. Yeah. But at the end of the day, uh, we do want to make sure that, that ultimately seniors do not feel isolated within our community. Right. We have facilities and programs uh, that support them. And uh, I think uh, we're, we're going to continue, as we always have uh, mm -hmm. in the city of Markham, to work with our seniors groups to make sure that their needs are, are being met. And uh, at the Unique Community Center, there's not only um, the center there, but a hub there of various uh, service providers so that they can actually get other help as well. It's one thing to go and enjoy and socialize and, and be active, which is all important. But then if a, a, a senior needs some additional help, yeah. there's a, a hub out of there where there's community services and some other organizations that can help support uh, individuals in the community as well. Okay, okay. so that's amazing. Why the mudin the orkum, you know, ela the verhelikum, and then save the ahatta kamirikal and katapodu. It can be irikinja community centers of the Venny Street till Amindala, any community center, Kanaka, Mudiorkana, Titangal, and Nadabarika Helam, and the Hondirkada, Irapadahabum. Pala Titangal, the Buddha, her Katum Poldu, Mudiork, eight of a hill away, other cool pine. Sadanangleo, Pine Padatum, Padiame Paleo, Ami Padak, Tam, Udavisa, the Palatangle Padahabum, by the Muzan Dore, Paramericum, Idangalada, the long term care centers, Pondra Idangale, Mehavum, Beriva, her cut to the Ku, Tam, Arasudan, Padabukondo, other Korean, Nadavari Hercule, Edith Kondir Padahabum, Frank, our Kalpurian Darhel. 
Uh, one last question is, um, you know, we've touched, uh, touched upon uh, uh, developments happening, uh, Tamil community, other community, other humanitarian efforts, and um, a lot of um, uh, uh, issues or developments that have happened after the pandemic. Um, Markham used to be, or it still is, a very safe place to live and work, but recently we've been noticing some crimes. Uh, um, there's, you know, shootings and murders that's uh, happening and we're hearing them on the news. Why is that happening? Is there any guns or um, control on the guns and viol violence in place in Markham, or is there any um, uh, plans or actions in place to sort of uh, put a stop to these? It's a, it's a, a concern and uh, I, a couple of things though I do want to say uh, mm. back in, in 2021, right. uh, Num, NumBio, which is an organization that actually measures a number of indicators, right. uh, ranked the city of Markham, the second safest uh, city in all of Canada. Mm. And uh, I think that's for a number of reasons. I, I mean, right. first of all, uh, you know, we, we invest in York Regional Police, and, and that's an important thing. I, I applaud York Regional Police because they also build <clears throat> relationships with different community members and different communities right. so that uh, you, you get to meet and, and, and uh, have uh, those relationships built mm. before there's any problems. I think that's, that's important. Right. And I also attribute that to the people of Markham. You know, if we have uh, a low crime rate and and we're deemed the second safest uh, place in all of Canada, that's because of the people that we have here too. Right. You know, people who have come from other parts of the world who've suffered, they understand the devastation of, of personal loss of life uh, with family members. And there's an, a real appreciation when people come here to Canada, they come to Markham, they really want to create a better life for uh, their families. And so there's a commitment, a big commitment. And uh, I say thank you to everyone who works hard at creating communities that support each other. So uh, as a mayor in the GTA, we have, we have spoken up over the last couple of years. We've asked uh, the federal government to do a number of things. And I have to say the federal government has responded. We ask that, that uh, you know, the guns, and I know even here in York region, when, uh, when guns are, are captured as part of an arrest, uh, very high percentage are guns that are illegal guns. They, you, you can't read the serial number or they've come from another source outside of, uh, of our area, in fact, outside of the country. So we asked uh, uh, the federal government to, to take uh, more measures at the border to stop the infiltration of handguns coming into the country, taking away right at the source, the opportunity to use those guns for crime. And so I, you know, again, the federal government can speak on all the efforts they, they have done, but they have taken measures. Uh, I know just uh, a few weeks ago, they, uh, big news story about the number of guns they had seized at the border that mm -hmm. were trying to make their way and where they make their way, they make their way into our communities is where they go. And okay. so uh, it's great that those efforts have uh, been undertaken. Okay. The federal government has also banned uh, assault style weapons and there's a number of weapons that are captured under that uh, scenario. Okay. Just a few weeks ago, and this is another thing that the, the GTA mayors have been requesting of the federal government and, and the provincial government as well, is that more dollars be made available to support programs that really are, I'll, I'll say they're preventative medicine, to go into uh, communities, to go uh, work with organizations that provide support to young people. Mm -hmm. so that they see they don't have to turn to gangs right. to get their their fulfillment they don't have to turn to gangs because that's the only place they see for them to Just to achieve life, yeah. yeah to achieve anything in life mm -hmm. so um i thank uh, minister marco mendicino he actually came to the city of markham 
and announced a, a $250 million program, which will be spread out throughout the country, okay. where the focus will be to those frontline organizations who are working with youth, trying to get uh, uh, youth develop skills through the programs that they have and give them the tools that they need to succeed in life. And so I'm very, very proud that uh, one, uh, he chose Markham to come and announce the program okay. and also announced that the city is going to be getting funds through that program. Now, interesting, it won't be necessarily the city involved directly. It, those dollars will flow through uh, organizations that are working with marginalized youth. So I'm actually hoping that we'll see an opportunity through some of the existing Tamil organizations to support local Tamil youth uh, through with uh, some of that, that funding. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was a key part of our statement from the GTA mayors, I'd say it's almost a couple of years ago mm -hmm. that we needed more dollars. And so 250 million from the federal government for their Builder Safer Communities Fund. Again, to support young people and, and make sure that they have the skill set to, to succeed. And, and this is really what we have to do, really make all of our efforts work together to support youth, whether it's through this program and organizations that are, are helping youth directly. The investment that we've made, I am very proud of the fact that a knee community center, it was, it was advanced several years yes. because I wanted to make sure that we were building that community center because I know that there is a high percentage of young people and youth in the south part of Markham and that we needed that facility sooner rather than later. later. And it's always been my philosophy that if you don't have facilities like that, then you miss out, you know, you, you don't have that available for five years. You, you miss out on a big segment of the teenage population mm -hmm. that doesn't have access to those programs. Yeah. Well, what are they gonna do? When they don't have access to those programs- That's when they go into other things, right? Exactly. Exactly. So this is why it was very important to advance the Anit Community Center and get it built for the Millican Mills area years in advance of what was proposed. I don't blame staff. They, they yeah. you know, systematically think about the dollars coming in and how we can build a community center and plan for it. And uh, when that plan came forward, I was very adamant as the mayor that we needed to advance that. And, and now... Uh, you know, the proof was in the puddings. And when we opened up the any community center, right. it was the most successful uptake of any community center ever built in the city of Markham. And everything from the formal programs to drop-in programs, kids that are playing basketball, not just inside, but outside, all those basketball courts that we built there. You know, so between the federal government and what we can do locally with our with our programs. Uh, again, it's important that, that you get those opportunities and that they are able to see the potential in themselves, no matter what they want to accelerate at, you know, sport, culture, arts, uh, and, and make sure that they see the alternative of these programs and being able to reach their full potential. Because when they can't see that, Right. When they don't see light at the end of the tunnel, yes. then they're going to turn to other things to get their fulfillment in life. Mm -hmm. And so um, I will just say that, uh, you know, it's not us saying it. It's a third party organization saying it. We're still the safest. That does not diminish, though, right. the impact that anyone um, feels with crime in our community. And it's still low. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, at the end of the day, between York Regional Police, the partnerships that we've formed, uh, we're doing everything we can mm -hmm. to ensure that we, we have a, a, safe, uh, a safe community. And it really is sad when there's a loss of life for anyone at any age, uh, but when they're connected to gang activity, mm -hmm. uh, I, think, uh, I think all of us have a responsibility to let youth know they get involved in, in those activities. It, it's not a life that um, um, is one they really want to embark on. 
And I, I'm hoping through this program and the what we've done as a city, and we'll continue to work with organizations to support them. Uh, I want the youth in the city of Markham to reach their full potential yes. and uh, they get the support they need within our, our own community. I'm also very proud, by the way, and this was uh, the leadership of our staff. I talked about our staff earlier and say how lucky we are. We formed a, we formed a partnership with Humber College mm. to give marginalized youth an opportunity. We donate used fire equipment okay. and in return, they provide some spots for us, uh, for marginalized youth mm -hmm. to pursue a career as a firefighter. Nice. And again, that's a way of being able to support youth that may not think necessarily, again, this is helping someone who, who doesn't know right. what opportunities are available to them. Right. You know, by, by enlisting in the program, they get the support of Humber College, they get the support of our Markham Fire and Emergency Services, and hopefully a fulfilling career as a fighter fighter versus ending up in a gang somewhere. And those are just, you know, some of the initiatives that we're, we're undertaking here in the city of Markham. Okay, all right, great. Um, Markham, that for the Nadi Prahindra, Kolehalo, முழுவதாக ஆபத்து கொடுக்கக்கூடிய ஆபரணங்களையோ எவற்றையும் இங்கால் கொண்டு வர முடியாதபடி அவர்கள் செய்வதாகவும் மற்றது இளைய தலைமுறை அதாவது இளைய தலைமுறையை நன்றாக நடை நல்வழிப்படுத்தினால் இப்படியான சம்பவங்கள் இடம்பெறாது என்பதை தாங்கள் மிகவும் அறிந்து வைப்பது வைத்திருப்பதாகவும் கம்யூனிட்டி சென்டர்ஸ் மூலமாக இளைய தலைமுறைக்குரிய பல திட்டங்களை தாங்கள் வகுத்திருப்பதாகவும் வகு வகுக்க போகதாக போவதாகவும் அவர்கள் கூறியிருந்தார் um so thank you uh frank scarpiti it, it's been a real pleasure you we've touched upon um so many uh different uh issues and your answers and showed your expertise and your passion for you know what you do for our markham city uh so on behalf of tt viewers and our tt um, management here we would really like to to thank you for your time and you know all your honest and genuine answers and um, your feedbacks to us. Um, wish you all well, the best. <laughs> I just want to say thank you and and really to to say this that uh, as a mayor and as a council, mm -hmm. uh, we we worked hard to get the young subway extended all the way up to Highway Seven. Right. Uh, that that's happening. We worked hard to attract mm -hmm. York University. Right. You talk about how youth can achieve their potential yes, yes. they're going to the be time. able yes yeah they're going to be able to go to university in their own right. backyard they won't have to spend the thousands of dollars for accommodation they're going to have this opportunity amazing. in their own backyard right. uh, so i just say this i i am very proud of the tamil community Thank and you. i just say that i i want the youth to stay here in the city of markham right you know i've always said why do we work so hard to attract people if we can't keep them here. I want to keep them here. There's a great future for them. And uh, it, it's always a work in progress. We have to keep working together, but I want them to see themselves and to, to see that this is the place for their future in the city of Markham. Okay, amazing. Really, thank you for everything that you do for our community and you know our, and our people here. And uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we hope to meet you uh, on many other occasions, and uh, we hope you will actually visit, visit us next time in the studio itself. Hopefully, this pandemic completely dies. Um, so once again, thank you, Frank. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to um, meet you and uh, keep doing the amazing work that you do. Thank you. Nandri, thank you. Nandri.